Okay, we're back. I'm uh, in the scriptures that uh, Zondervan Bible, Compact Bible Dictionary gave us to go to when we read the definition of Edom, which says Edom figures prominent in the prophetic scriptures as a scene of great future judgments. And it gave Isaiah 34, 5, and 6. And Isaiah 63rd chapter, the verse 1 down. So we're looking at this, the judgment that's coming upon the earth, future judgment, future prophecy, as it tells us in 2 Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that following. We got next forever and ever and ever. As the chosen people of the Most High of the 12 tribes of Israel, one third, mind you. So Isaiah 34 and 5 says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia. So we read what the definition of Idumia is. In the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, it says pertaining to Edom, Edom, Rome. So we know the Romans are so-called Caucasians. The Romans are so-called Italian Caucasians. They are the Edomites. That's what it says. Edom, Rome. Who says so? This is what they gave. As a reference of a scripture that says she's the only neighbor of the Israelites who was not given any mercy from the Most High. Engage the scriptures here. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, upon the Edomites, who would have to be ruling during the time of the end of the world, whose blessing was to live by the sword and had a fatness of the land, which they do. And upon the people of my curse to judgment. What's the curse? No pigment, no melanin. Leprosy. But clean lepers, the sword of the Most High is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness. And with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of, of the kidneys of rams, for the Most High has a sacrifice in Basra. Basra is the capital city of Edom. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So let's go up. Let's go to verse 1. It says, Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken. Listen, ye people, let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Most High is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. You see that? His fury upon all their armies because they're going to prepare to fight Omashiach Yahushai and the Most High. But he's telling you his fury is going to be upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. And their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Out of their dead bodies. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. The kingdoms shall be melted with their blood. Saying all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, like we read in Second Peter three and ten. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Right here on this earth. Not talking about where the most high and the angels dwell. All the host army of heaven shall be dissolved. All the armies on this earth, like he said, his fury upon all their armies, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll that's like the only thing that we can i can think of is like when america dropped those atom bombs on nakasaki and hiroshima in japan gonna be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts all their armies shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a flaming fig from the fig tree. You see? Then he goes on to what I just, what they gave you in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary concerning Edom, verse 5 and 6, telling you how. They're going to be, this is how you're going to do it. The only thing we think of is right now is nuclear destruction. But, all of them going to come together. Conclusion of the whole matter, many places. Look at the destruction of this world. Well, let's look at what Amashek was going to do. In uh, 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, we're going to look at verse 9. And read down from there. 
Second Ezra 13 and 9. Going right along with what we just read in Isaiah 34 and 4. Second Ezra 13 and 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, that's the armies, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force of all these nations that's prepared to fight on Mashiach Yahweh as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire. <coughs> and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. That's all coming from his mouth. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight all these armies that he said. And this fury upon all their armies. And fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight all their armies. And burned them up. Everyone. So upon a sudden of innumerable multitude of all these nations coming together preparing to fight the Mashiach Yahushua nothing was to be perceived but what? But only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, when I say he saw this he said I was afraid, scared of That's one spot. So now let's go to Revelation. 19 <clears throat> and 11 and I saw heaven open John the Revelator's most high is giving him a vision he's saying he's seeing heaven open and behold a white horse this is pure righteous power and he that sat upon it was called faithful and true and in righteousness that's the laws of the most high we read that in Deuteronomy 6 and 25. By the laws of the Most High, he does judge and make war. Now let's go to 2 Ezra again. Because <clears throat> he gave an explanation of what he was saying and what we just heard. We talked about it more. A little bit more understanding in uh, 2 Ezra 13 and verse 37. So you know it's talking about a Mashiach Yahweh that's sitting on this white horse. Pure righteous power that's coming to judge and make war. Second Ezra 13 and 37. And this my son, this is a Mashiach Yahweh shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations. All their army, Navy, Marines, and ordinances that they have for war. And this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. Remember we just read, ain't going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. You're going to burn every one of them up, it says. This is what you're going to do. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented which are like unto a flame. The flame is the word of the Most High. Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not my word like a fire. Listen. And he shall destroy them without labor, as he said. By how? By the law, which is like unto fire. You know? He's going to be killing them and telling them the torments you're going to tell them about their evil thoughts, which is contrary to the law of the Most High. That you're perpetrating right now, saying we ain't got to deal with. He's going to be killing them. He's going to get them for their evil thoughts. And tell them the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented. Just killing them. Where they ain't going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. Those spirits... So the army, the navy, the marines, and the air force of all these nations are going to be tormented. They're tormented. 
to torments wherewith they shall begin. This is after he killed them. To be tormented. Which are like unto a flame. Fire. Continue. We say where the worms never die and the fires never quench. And he shall destroy them without labor. By the law. That you say we not under. Which is like unto fire. <laughs> Going back to Revelation 19. You're going to be saying thou shall not. Kill, thou shalt not murder. And telling them with their evil thoughts. Revelation 19. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture. This is a Mashiach Yahushai as he come back in his angelic power. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him. Now we know them armies. Ready to 9.16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. Y'all ready for this? And I heard the number of them. 200 million angels coming with them. Ready to 19 and 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of the Most High. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, pure righteous power. Clothed, they're not butt naked angels. Clothed in fine linen. They're going to be clothed in fine linen. White and clean. Look at it. And out of his mouth, what we just read in, tell me the apocalypse is not real. In 2nd Ezra 13, 9. Through 11. In the Apocrypha, we just read it. And out of his mouth go up a sharp sword. That with it, he should smite or kill the nations. They're going to be gathered together to fight him. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, which is what? The law. What does it say? Second Ezra 13 and 38. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto fire. And I told you, Jeremiah 23 and 29 says, Is not my word like unto fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So when you see it says, in verse 15, and out of his mouth go up a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite or kill the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, that's by the law of the Most High. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Most High. So now they gave Isaiah the 63rd chapter. So remember he said his breast is going to be dipped in blood. So it's coinciding with prophecy of what's written in the Bible. So why is his vesture, his clothes, going to be dipped in blood? Isaiah 63rd chapter. He says, verse 1, Who is this that cometh from Edom? See? With dyed garments from Basra. Remember we read in... Uh, what they gave us already pertaining to Isaiah 34, 5, and 6. And we before that, we remember it's gonna be it's gonna be rolled up like a scroll. Let's go back there. Let me before I deal with that, let me go back to something I want to cover on that also. Um and um Isaiah 30, 34 and uh verse 4 it says, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Like I told you, that's like that atom bomb that they dropped on. That's the only thing we can think of on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan. And I've been there. And they that's it's like some kind of white lint or something in the air all the time. They had diplomacies and all that stuff there. 
mess that place up. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. And all their hosts, all their armies, shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine. And as the falling fig from the fig tree, right? So now when you look at, go to Revelation the 6th chapter. And let's start at verse 13 from what we just read because by the time you get to Revelation you got to know all the different scriptures that is actually will make this come alive like I say it could be a lot of it in um, parables it says Revelation 6 and 13 and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth right that's the celebrities the people that's uh, in high places and ain't talking about the stars in the sky it's not talking about those stars in the, in, that the most High put in the sky because he said in uh, Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus 43 I'm just proving it ain't talking about stars that you see in the sky Ecclesiasticus 43 and we'll start at verse 9 it says the beauty of heaven the glory of the stars and ornament given light in the highest places of the most high at the commandment of the holy one they will stand in their order if you see us go out there and see a star tonight or whenever night comes and you look at that one star you go out the next day it's going to be right there right let's see if they're going to fall he's talking about those stars going to fall from in the sky down to the earth at the commandment of the Holy One, verse 10, they will stand in their order and never faint in their watches, meaning they're never going to move from the place that the Most High put them in from the beginning of this world. So now it's not talking about this. It's talking about those in high places in this earth. Revelation 12. I mean, excuse me, Revelation 6. In verse 13, and the stars of heaven, like you say, those that are in high places, those that like celebrities, and those that are, um, you know, renowned in this world that we in now, stars of heaven shall fail unto the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs, like we read in Isaiah, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, right? This is what it says, and the heaven departed as a scroll nuclear power destruction when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were, were moved out of her place sis. when this destruction started to come from the ends of the earth the ends of this world when the most I bring forth his indignation upon this world that we in now and the kings of the earth and the great men see there it is your stars falling from heaven like figs, the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. They got places that they have already, already dug in. They already had that before 2000 came in. They had just over 22 years. They just continue to build. They got places on the ground, bunkers and all that. But you see what it said? The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne the Most High, and from the wrath of the Lamb, the wrath of Amashiach Yavashai, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? See? His prophecy going to be as it is written. And nobody going to escape from the wrath of the Most High, as it is written, y'all. That's why he said that. You know, where you gonna hide from the sky? 
Where you gonna hide from the most high who made everything? I'm not saying I'm shy that made everything. Hmm? Look at uh Jeremiah 16, 16. Jeremiah 16, 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the most high. Here we are, fishing, trying to get people to come back to the most highest truth of this what this Bible is talking about. Before it's too late. You're gonna have a remnant of all the nations. That's going to be cleaving to the Israelites Saying we know that the Most High is with you So far Where's the armies The navies, the marines and the air forces right now As we're going through The Most High talking And bringing forth the understanding Of prophecy of the end times Where they at Remember we saying going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke So where they at You ain't got nobody to call on you can't call 911. <laughs> he said, Behold, I will send for many fishers, said the Mosai, and they shall fish them. That's why my Shaka Shai came and told the, the disciples, What? Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. So here we are now, being fishers of men in these last days. And they shall fish them. It's only so long that we're going to be able to do what we're doing. That's why all you that don't know, you better be trying to inquire about as much as you can learn about. Revelation, the first chapter, the 22nd chapter, from Daniel's the first chapter to the 12th chapter, the books of Ezra. Ezra got 204 books. We only have 80. So we got 124 more books than the world has been given. Who cares? Nobody really cares. Y'all better be knowing this when they come and snatch the Bibles. Whoever had a Bible, it's like during the time of the Greeks, it was put to death. You got to know this. You got to learn it, live it, and apply it in your life. So that whenever it do come, you ready. Behold, I will send for many fishers and said the most high, and they shall fish them. Just what we're doing now. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, every kingdom, and from every hill, every little kingdom. And out of the holes of the rocks. Remember, they're going to run into the mountains in the holes of the rocks. They're going to say, follow us, follow us. But hide us from the Most High who sit on this throne and the Lamb of Mashiach Kelvishah. In judgment. But mine eyes are upon all their ways. You hear what the Most High say? He's looking at everything. They are not hid from my face. His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. See, they're not here for my face, neither is their iniquity here for mine eyes. You know what he said? Hmm. He's seeing it. That's why Amos 9 and 8. Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the Most High, that's 10,000 times brighter than the sun, the eyes of the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel, are upon the sinful kingdom. The Most High's eyes are upon America, the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. We just read about it. Saving, he's going to save someone, that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Most High. You see? Why? Because hold that. Go to the book of Zechariah. Because we, we talk about, I talk about the one third of the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's look at where it's written pertaining to this remnant. In uh, Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, said the Most High, Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. That's two thirds of our people, the twelve treasures, shall be cut off and die. But the third, that's one third, shall be left therein. That's why you hear us always talking about the one third and the two thirds. Here it is, that's where it comes from. And I will bring the third part 
That's the one third through the fire, through the word of the Most High. And we'll refine them as silver is refined, and we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is my power. Right? So now going back to Amos 9 and 8. Behold, the eyes of the Most High power are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving, he's going to save someone that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Most High. You're not going to utterly destroy one third of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what he said. For lo, I will command, this is the end times. I will command. Now, how can he do this? In the end of days, if we don't exist as the 12 tribes of Israel, he said, for lo, I will command, he's going to give an order, and I will sift the house of Israel, the family of Israel, the Israelites, among all nations, that he scatters among all nations. Like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet shall not the least grain, that's the one-third of the 12 tribes of Israel, fall upon the earth. You see? But what's what he say? All the sinners, all you that say you ain't under the law, and you breaking the most high's law, statute commandments of my people who are the twelve tribes of Israel, shall die by the sword. He gonna kill you. Which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us, because y'all thinking the most high is the way you think he is. His ways are thus, not our ways are thus, but he gives us enough of himself that you done heard within this lesson to fear him. Or you a fool. You a fool if you don't fear him. I ain't hearing all the things that we done heard this day. That's why I say, they're going to say what? All the sinners, those that break the law, statute of commandments of the Most High, and for you New Testament busts, that's 1 John 3 and 4. What is sin? It ain't in the New Testament. I mean, excuse me, the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. What you believe in, so-called believe in, because you don't really know enough of it to really understand that there is no New Testament. There's only the law and the prophets. When any of these brothers and sisters walk the earth, what's sin? First John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. They're the most high's law. You see? So now, that's why it's sin. Amos 9 and 10. It's the two-thirds of our people, the Israelites. All the sinners of my people who are the 12 tribes of Israel, those that transgress the most high's laws you say you're not under, shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Because you draw an evil to you because you not can't be dealing with righteousness because you ain't dealing with trying to keep the most high's laws. That's righteousness. We read that in Deuteronomy 6 and 25. So if you're not doing that, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. That's why, look, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. What does it say? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High. Be afraid, be scared of the Most High that's bringing his indignation, his fury, his woe. Destruction and his calamity. Fear the Most High. Utterly respect the Most High. And keep his commandments. But this is the whole duty of man. This is what it says to you. For the Most High, who my second child who's chose to judge, shall bring every work into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See? That's why he say, All the sinners of his people shall die by the sword. That say the evil shall not prevail or prevent us. That's why it behooves you to come back to the Most High's law, statute, and commandments because. Look what he told us in Psalm 78 and 5. 
And a lot of y'all say the Old Testament, show me if thou can. But my Shekhar Bashai, what did he go by when he came here in the flesh? When he said, as it is written, what was it written? In the books of Peter? In James, in Paul's writings, when he says as it is written, when he when he stood up in the temple and read Isaiah the sixty first chapter, is that in the New Testament? Or did he ever read anything when he was in the flesh here on the earth from the book of Revelations? Or any of the books that you're looking at after Acts, the first chapter, the ninth verse. If thou can say. Because it's, it's, this is real simple But it seems like When you open up the Bible It's like, like, like what it is Back to what, they, what the devil has done I gotta bring it back again Because Look what he's done It's so objective In Revelation 18 and 23 For by thy sorceries Were all nations deceived and the, the devil's objective is to deceive the whole world so by his sorceries, by his witchcraft, were all nations deceived. See? So this is what we're supposed to be doing. Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them these laws that of the Most High known to their children. Would you see how they stop what it is that the Most High telling us to do by telling us and teaching us and having us regurgitated over and over again? We're not out of the law. But we're in the mercy and grace and we Gentiles. Mercy and grace is only for the Israelites because we're the only ones that was given the law. He established a testimony in Jacob. Jacob was the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel and appointed a law in Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. He gave us his law. Which he commanded our fathers that they should make them, what is this? The law of the Most High known to their children. Why? That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children. So as you teach your children, they teach their children, now we're dealing with the laws. That they might set their hope or their faith in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep His commandments. You see? Laws, commandments, y'all want to try and say commandments is not the laws, it just said. For He established a testimony in Jacob, verse 5, and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So it says the law there, right? That the generation to come might know them, the law, the laws, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope or their faith in the Most High and not forget the works of the Most High, but keep his commandments. Laws, commandments, the same thing. Rules and regulations. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart, their mind aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. See? Verse 10, they kept not the covenant of the Most High, the contract, the agreement, the laws of the Most High, and refused to walk in His law. Sound familiar? Like these religions now. Refuse to walk in his law. Come with all kinds of excuses. We ain't under the law. And forgot his works. And his wonders that he had showed them. Marvelous things that he. In the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt. In the field of Zohan. Think about all the plagues that he brought upon the Egyptians. Ten plagues. Just forgot about them. Go to the book of Galatians. The fourth chapter. Go 
Galatians, the fourth chapter, the fifth verse. It says, well, let's read verse four. But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son, who was a Mashiach Yahushai, made of a woman, made under the law. The law says a man got to lay with a woman. It says to redeem them that were under the law, who was under the law, to our tribes of Israel that we might receive the adoption of sons. You see that? To redeem them that were under the law. Who under the law? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. First and foremost. Redeem that, them that were under the law. He just said he established the testimony of Jacob and the point of the law in Israel. Psalms 147, 19 and 20 proves who were under the law. A lot of y'all like to go to Galatians. Look at the first verses of Galatians. Say to the saints. Who's the law given to? Psalms 147, 19 and 20. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. That's what? Showing his word and his statutes and his judgments. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, the punishments for breaking the Most High's laws, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. You see that? So, Psalms 105 and 6. Psalms 105 and 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, Ye children of Jacob, his chosen, 12 tribes of Israel, children of Jacob, that's who we are. That's our forefather. We the chosen of the Most High. He is the power, our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant or contract agreement he made with Abraham. And his oath unto Isaac. And confirm the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, for an everlasting covenant. There it is. Look at Titus, the second chapter. See, if you really go into it and you look at uh, who the Most High, you know, when you look at all these different ways that the Most High have. Uh, showed us um, pertaining to, like I said, the Israelites are the chosen people of the Most High. He showed us. He only know us. He only know us. Titus 2. And let's look at verse 13. Titus, the second chapter, 13 verse. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great power in our Savior, Mashiach Yahushai, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us, the 12 tribes of Israel, from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, right? So, Acts 5. 29 to 31. It's proved that his blood was shed for the Israelites. Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and all the apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. You've been listening all day long or wherever you listen to this. You better obey the most high rather than men. The most high power of our fathers. Raised up a Mashiach of Shai whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Not no cross, but hanged on a tree. Him who was a Mashiach of Shai, the most high exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. There it is. To the Israelites, not to anyone else. To the Israelites. John the Baptist came baptizing before Mashiach was coming. 
equals he baptized him. Hmm? Acts the 13th chapter, verse 24. What people were John the Baptist baptizing? When John, who was John the Baptist, Mashiach Shai cousin, had first preached before his coming, before Mashiach Shai coming, what? The baptism of repentance to who? To all the people of Israel. You see? All the people of Israel, to the Israelites. Let's go back. Titus. The second chapter. Verse 14 says, Who gave himself for us. Who Amashiach Abishai gave himself for us, the twelve tribes of Israel, we just read. Repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. You see? Who that peculiar people? Go back to Deuteronomy. Let's see if we can find who that peculiar people is. Let's go back to the law. Most I told us, um, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. Deuteronomy 1 and 1 says, These be the words that most I spoke to Moses to the children of Israel on this side of Jordan. So like Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people. Who is this peculiar people? For thou art an holy people. We the twelve tribes of Israel. Unto the most high thy power, your power. And the most high have chosen thee. We the twelve tribes of Israel to be a peculiar people. There it is. Unto himself. That's why I said when you read the New Testament, they only had a lot of the prophets to go by. That's why you see, and they were just quoting what it is that we see, they read here and understood. But thou art in holy people. Unto the most high thy power, your power. No one else's. Most high say the power of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Say this is my name forever, the memorial to all generations. It don't change. You done heard it over and over again. And the Most High have chosen thee, the twelve tribes of Israel, to be that one third that we read about, to be a peculiar people unto himself. Ain't nobody like us. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. That's why they don't want you to rise up. Because we that peculiar people that the Most High chose. Deuteronomy 28 and 64 Remember we started here Verse 15 said We didn't follow his commandments You're going to bring all these curses upon us So Deuteronomy 28 and 64 Why he say you're going to gather us from all the different Countries where he scattered us into Because we broke his laws Statute commandments The same thing that you're saying that we're not under most I said in Deuteronomy 28, 64, and the Most High shall scatter thee, we the Israelites, among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there will be scattered among these all the other nations. And there thou shalt serve other gods or other idols, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. That's all these different religions that are we're uh, subject to. And a lot of you locked into it because two thirds of our people are not going to come back to these laws, such commandments of the Most High. So look what happens with us. When the Moscow shies on the earth, you prophesy. Luke 21 and 20. He said, And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, 
Now, if you understand, and you take off that uh, that shield of darkness, gross darkness that's upon your eyes and in your mind, to have your brain polluted. Because the people's minds are polluted. They're in gross darkness, gross ignorance, gross not knowing. If you don't understand history, our story, his story, but mainly our story, because his story, he lied about his story. But now here's the truth. You're getting it from the word of the Most High, whether you accept it or not. Like you said, you're going to be held accountable. You got a choice to choose life or death. That's the only choice that we have. So he's telling us, he's prophesying. In Luke 21 and 20, he said, And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, what armies would this be? Amashkab Shai is in the Roman Empire. The Romans are the one that pierced his hands and his feet. They're the ones that hung him on the tree that we just read about. The so-called white man. He said, and when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. The desolation of we as being in our land of Israel is near. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountain. That's when we, he's saying flee to the mountain. You flee into the mountains. You've been to Israel, you go flee into the mountains. You're going into Egypt, like he told Joseph and Mary. Take the baby and flee into Egypt. You see? To hide among the people that were there. Because we had provinces in Africa. Say go and hide among the Egyptians and our people that were there. You had to be similar. You couldn't be looking like an Edomite, a so-called white man, or else you were stuck out like a sore thumb. Surely they would have found him. I was there. I remember going to Jamaica. And it was a cat riding on the bicycle, and he just took out like a sore thumb. He was, I don't know if he was an Edomite, I don't know what he was, but I don't know he was light. He was real light. He just took out like a sore thumb. But that son over there makes you a chocolate. <laughs> he just stood out. He was riding that bicycle. I was like, wow. He was like, look at there. Because you didn't, I didn't even see that. So that's how it would be with Amashe Shai if he was a so-called white boy. And Joseph and Mary looked like this. If they looked like this. Oh, see, they <laughs> cut off on me. 